I've been living around this one and two right Hidden pain, hidden tears Had to keep them locked away I just shed so many tears Heat my heart, save my soul I bury my heart anew They've been working on my soul But I'm so blessed Leave it up to God so right now I just worry less yeah. Heal my heart, save my soul my past this is exciting ah oh, man i can't wait to get this started let's go all right is this good Beautiful. all right name and where you're from hi i'm tatan phillips i'm from buff bay jamaica born and raised tell me about your family growing up um i had a good family upbringing um in jamaica i had family traveling from the united states continually and um, for that it helped me to have a pretty much a pretty rich um, background meeting traveling around the island and um, the family was very close so I had a pretty good upbringing um, single parent my mother I grew up with my mom um, my father migrated and left when I was a youth so my father was not in my life as a youth um, but I didn't I wasn't lacking anything as a child so were you a mom Strict? Yes, extremely strict. Um, and to this day remains so. And one of the biggest influences in my life, or the biggest, I should say. And um, she's still impactful in my life. So I can say I have an amazing mother, and I'm, I'm grateful for it. Was your childhood event free? Yeah, yeah, pretty much so. Um, Stress free. We was raised well, went to the, had the best of education that um, I could have. And um, yep, drama free as far as as far as when I compare myself or I listen to the stories of the many people I've met over the decades, um, I can say that it's been a blessed childhood. Yeah. What kind of kid were you in high school? In high school, which was here in the United States, it was when I, after I migrated at the age of 12 to New York, to Queens, New York. Um, I was, I did part of high school in New York and I came to Florida um, to Kissimmee and finished high school in Kissimmee. 11 and 12th 12, 12th grade were done in Kissimmee. Um, I was a happy, happy person. Um, the conflicts within myself was, you know, mainly with the, the issues I had with my father, which I met at the age of 12. And so not knowing him, and just that family dynamic of leaving Jamaica, coming to a new country, um, those issues arise itself in me lashing out in different ways. Um, but it, but as far as a child, childhood and high school, um, I was pretty, pretty smooth transition as well. I, as I said, I, I have nothing but to be grateful for my childhood, all the way through school. It was a true blessing. What did you do after high school? Well, I joined the Army National Guard and uh, I started working. I had an auto accident um, about a year after high school that led to a quadriplegic injury. But um, immediately after high school, I joined the Army National Guard as a medic. And I started college. Tell me about your accident. Um, so that's a loaded story, but I left the house and it was raining heavily. Um, before I left the house, my girlfriend at the time was warning me not to leave because she had a dream that I was in an accident. And I don't remember much, but what I do remember is trying to control a car that was losing control of itself. And then I remember waking up in a hospital. How did you feel in the moment with when you were trying to gain control of the vehicle? I, the only thought was controlling the vehicle. I don't remember what I felt. 
Um, I remember absolutely nothing until I woke up in the hospital. How much time later did you wake up from the accident? Um, it was three days later I woke up out of the coma. Um, albeit my parents were told that I would be catatonic because I had no heart or brain function for an hour and a half full. So the doctors were expecting me to remain in said state, but I woke up. And when I woke up and I opened my eyes, I was a different person than the person that I knew the first 18 years of my life. Immediately, I was a different person. I opened my eyes and within myself, I had a quick conversation. It took it maybe a quick second and the conversation said, what's happening? Who are you? And what's changed? And immediately in me, I knew I was a different person and uh, I had a peace inside of me that I did not know and I didn't understand. And since that, that time, which is, I was 19, I'm 39 now. I've been on a journey to get to know that piece in a new way. But I was no heart or brain function for a full hour and a half. My father identified, looked at a dead body when he left work and he came to the hospital and he looked at a fully deceased body. And he, he, he couldn't believe what he was looking at. And he just reminded me of this a couple months ago when he was looking at my dead body. But here I sit. And the first thing I remembered was looking around the room and wondering what happened. And I remember looking at these different um, um, machines connected to me. Some of them was pumping IV. Some of them looked like they had medicine in them. And I was wondering, okay, what's going on? And then I had a feeling on the inside that was different. A peace. I had peace. I had total peace in my mind. And I, now before the accident, previous that, I remember there being conflict in my mind. Always conflict. But now I wake up and I'm in this situation, I had a peace in me. And I knew that peace didn't come from me. I knew that it was a total peace that was given unto me. But I was just at peace. I did not know, however, that the doctors were telling my parents that I had a life expectancy of a few months to a year. I did not know, however, that I had been to this traumatic accident. I didn't even know that I was paralyzed now from the neck down. I thought I was whole and just sitting in this hospital bed, recovering. Um, I did not know that my life was going to now change dramatically from that point on. I didn't know of what was ahead. The only thought I had was that I, I just had an accident, you know. Um, and so, but I had total peace. And that peace prepared me for what was next. Because uh, I truly believe that if that peace wasn't given unto me, I wouldn't have been able to handle the truths that came later on in my life. As a young man, um, I was always in battle with the family dynamic in the house, a stepmom, um, a father that I didn't have a relationship with or a connection with, and uh, being strict Caribbean people and me being a teenager, wanting my own way. Um, so up to the age of 18, um, though everything was provided, it was always a, a bit tumultuous as far as myself and dealing with my father and, and my stepmom. Um, not that there was any issues or any lack, but, you know, on my part, I always wanted more. I always wanted my own freedoms. I always wanted to do my own thing, um, you know, and, but that was totally removed from me. And there was no questions that was within my mind that, you know, I just had a peace about life that comes, I believe it would come with maturity, but with me, it was instantaneous. It was just me waking up and being different. After the accident, um, I had a desire to include my stepmom, my father in my life. So my, my father, um, at the age of 18 or 19, when I came out of the hospital said, you know, you do this, did this to yourself. So he's going to wipe his hand clean off me. And, I have to take care of myself now. Um, being in a city that I'd never been to, which is Orlando, Florida, um, I, I'd never been here before when I came, and I was going to end up in a nursing home at the age of 19. Um, but I decided that if I'm going to be love, if I'm going to continue this life um, and the truths that I'm learning about who I am and my desire to seek and serve uh, a God with um, I 
fostered a really good relationship with my stepmom now and my father now before the accident i didn't really have a relationship with my stepmom and my father but um you know i what i did was i continually kept in contact i would have friends take me down to the family house and just be there when you know without them knowing that i would i would pop up um and i i desire that a heavy desire to have that relationship which I know if it was up to them, it wouldn't have happened because they wouldn't have pushed towards me, but I pushed towards them in every way so I can foster that, that relationship with them. So the piece that I gained because of the, of the accident was knowing that all things are well regardless of what I'm going through. And me seeking the word of God helped me. Me getting into the word, getting into the Bible is what I mean. And reading and reading and using that word to strengthen myself has been the biggest help to me in my life, period. Um, and that peace that was obtained to me was, um, has been all confirmed, confirmed, confirmed to me through the word of God. Um, and so what I was going through on my own, um, there's no way I believe I could have taken on this, this monumental task. Um, I immediately coming out of the hospital, um, things that people said was impossible. For example, I was told I'm in this situation and I could never live a normal life. I'm in this situation. I could never live independently. I was in the situation. I was going to be on trays of pills every single day for the rest of my life. And all of that was proven to be wrong. And it was only through my faith. Was I, was I able to get through? I was in a power chair out of the hospital. My hands were, were closed. Um, I could not barely move my upper body. I, I couldn't do anything for myself. Put on a I couldn't feed myself. There was, um, life was totally dependent, and I was told that I would be dependent for the rest of my life. Um, but yet, I've lived independently on my own since three months after I came out of the hospital. I've lived on my own, period. I was told because of brain damage, I'd never go back to school. Um, and I was told the government would not help me to go to school, but yet I put myself through school um, without the government's assistance, um, even with them telling me I would never be able to do it. Um, you know, I was working six months out of the hospital full time, which I was told, you know, that that was going to be impossible. Uh, and so me staying grounded, believing in myself, and continuing to push, and having that desire to live, um, really changed my life in ways that I think even if if the accident didn't happen, I, I really, when I think about it, believe that I would have just been in that state of going to school and, and doing the norm, but I don't believe I would have matured as quickly as I did, and I would have probably accomplished a lot of things that I did accomplish in life, so... I'm grateful. I truly am grateful. Tell me, tell me about your relationship with God. So my relationship with God um, trumps everything in my life. It is my life. Um, there is no life outside of my relationship with God. Um, so I, I, I pray. I continually through the day. And uh, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. God is my life. It's not a religion to me. God is not a religion. God is not a set time, go to church on Sunday. No, God is life to me. And I believe that um, we're all part of God and in God's. Um, as the word lets us know that we are created in God's image. And I believe that that's, that's exactly so. And my journey is to allow the Lord's word to come out of me. And he's done these wonderful things in my life. Um, you know, according to medical documents, I am not supposed to be alive. I'm not supposed to be, have, be cognitive and be able to have these conversations with anyone. Yet here I am. I'm not supposed to be able to live the way I live. And yet here I am. And so, um, and I, I can't attain it to me. It's not, it's not me. Because I don't have the strength in, in, within myself to do these things. Um, you know, there were dreams in me from before the accident that became reality and 
there are still dreams now that become reality consistently and continually and they have nothing to do with me. So, yeah, God provides. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I recently, this chair I'm sitting on, this wheelchair, was donated to me and the young man that donated to me, he passed away a month ago. Now, he was in the wheelchair for 37 years. And he was a paraplegic, meaning that his paralysis is from the back down. The paralysis that I sustained was me breaking my neck C5 to C7, or the vertebrae in my neck. They had to take a rib bone out of my, um, my lower rib here and reconstruct the fifth vertebrae. So the paralysis is actually from the neck down. So balance and feeling and nerves and even my hands, the use of hands, everything from the neck down is, is affected. This young man was affected from the waist down and his mom told me that his whole life he wanted to live independently. He wanted to be able to do everything on his own. But yet he never did that. Um, when it comes to the accident, I was by myself in a new city. My parents weren't there to help me. Um, I was just... At the age of 19, I had to look at life and figure out life. And so being the fact that I was thrown out without the support, I had to lean somewhere. I had to look for somewhere for help. And without the ability to lean directly on people, but I had to pray and lean directly on my beliefs and in the word and then see God bring things into my life. That made the difference because it strengthened my faith. Um, I can give you example like example of example how God brought things into my life and brought people into my life and provided for me in supernatural ways. So it strengthened my faith. Now, if someone don't believe and don't have that desire to get to know God or the, the desire to, to push beyond what they can see in front of their face, then they might be limited to what's in front of them and limited to the truth that they can see. But I wasn't limited to what was in front of me. I wasn't limited to only what I was told because I knew that there was a greater truth beyond what I can see. For example, um, I was in the hospital and the Orlando Magic's wheelchair basketball team came to visit. And I said, what's the difference between me and these young men? and woman and they look like normal people sitting in the wheelchair here i was in this big power chair being told i'll never live like them and i said why what's the reason their injury is different okay why um i'm in the wheelchair and i i've met with my own, you know three people that were actually in the wheelchair and now walking around and running as if nothing had ever happened to them one of them was in the wheelchair for 36 years 36 full years she was paralyzed from the back down, and now Miss Mura is running around with muscles in her leg that just came back, just normal. And her daughter and grandson is crying. Um, I've met several people over the years. One man, 14 years, he was in the wheelchair um, in a, with a similar injury. And I said, what's the difference between me and them? So I believe that because of faith and only because of my faith, is everything possible? And that's that's what I get from the word when I read the word, and I believe the word to be true. So the answer about faith is yes. Only because of my faith do I believe that I am where I am in life, and God's grace and mercy that's beyond myself. I believe God is good. My life has um, continued to be good. Um, it, the more true I I am to myself, and the more that I try to serve and to be a good brother, a good friend. Um, and when I say the word good, what I mean is to do unto others as you have done unto you. Um, what I mean is to love them in the capacity that, it, um, you know, it, it's a palpable love where they know that you care and you care. I believe that um, my relationships have all been good. Even with ex, you know, you know um, partners, or with people that I had, there could be some kind of conflict or there have been some kind of conflict. Um, it's been good. And 
um, you know, there's only love here when it comes to people. So I can say that I don't know if things would have been different if this didn't happen. I can't say. I've thought about that. Um, and I remember even leading up to this accident, I was sitting in Texas in med school and I thought about my life and I thought about what would it be if I weren't here in this place right now? What would have happened if I was raised in India or raised in Africa or stayed in Jamaica or stayed in New York? What would my life be? And um, now I can sit and I can reflect and say, what would my life be? But none of that matters. Only thing that matters is where I am. And I'm happy of where I am. And I don't know if life would be any different otherwise. Um, so I can only deal with the now. And with the now, we are instructed to be well. And so I try to just live in the now, not think about what it would be. And it's good. And, it's, and I pray that it continue to, be, to get better. What do you do for work? Right now, I don't work. Yeah, I'm not working a regular job at the moment. How do you, um, how you're able to take care of yourself financially? Okay, financially, right now, I have a lot of support from my family, um, my mother, my, um, my friends. I do have a few side jobs that I do, whether it's selling products online, doing some IT work for whoever might come in, come um, a little bit of day trading, a little bit of investment, um, helping people structure portfolios, which I first started day trading in 2005 and I've worked for several investment firms over the years. And um, I also have a seven year career in IT, which I, I worked IT um, but I walked away from those things in order to seek the Lord first. So now, besides serving in the church, I serve in a nonprofit that is Wheels for Christ that helps bikers and their families when they have issue. And so that is, so I, and I wanted to serve God with my life. I wanted to um, serve people with my life. And so now I'm in a place where I no longer have to work a nine to five. Um, provided for by the blessings of my family um, and I'm able to serve the kingdom. Um, so tonight there is a, a ministry going out and I'm being called to come and serve that ministry and to go help. I still might go help. And that is a biker ministry um, called Wheels for Christ. Uh, and continually I have different ministries reaching out to me, whether the pastors or um, people within that ministry for me to come and help in different capacities and that's I've always always wanted to serve people in my life and that's where I'm at right now just serving as a child um, I remember one day I was I, I was in New York and um, as a kid you know you always you know I used to dream about nice cars and just materialistic things but I remember being 14 in New York and I went to my cousin's house. He was already in, in college and he had a book and this book had all these charts and I, had, and I was like, what is this? And he said to me, that's the stock market. And I didn't know what he was talking about. And I remember saying to myself, one day when I get older, I'm going to do that. And I remember um, coming up to, to where it was time to decide what school to do and what you want to do in life. And I said something in computers. It was in the 90s, something in computers. Um, but also after that, I didn't have desires. I, uh, you know, I knew that um, I, life, for me, life was more material. Um, and I, I always thought about materialistic things. And I remember dreaming and wanting a mate, wanting a, a wife, wanting to live a good life. But my idea of good, a good life um, back then has transformed. Um, not knowing that one day when I was 25, I was actually going to get into the stock market stuff and I was actually going to then be propelled into a career of it where that had nothing to be do with me seeking after it. It had to do with God bringing it into my life. And um, so, yeah, my, my desires were family-based, just having a, a good life. And I can say that all of the desires within myself at that age, most of them has come true. Most of them has come true. Um, I'm a car guy, and even though this happened, it didn't stop me. My last car is a world record holder for the quarter mile, 
and I just got rid of a car during COVID. So, and I'm in a wheelchair, paralyzed from the neck down. Um, for three years, I, every, every week, I was getting race gas, methanol, setting my tune and going out street racing. And I used to have these gloves. And on the blogs and on the forums online, they used to talk about me thinking, I, you know, because everyone, no one knew I was in a wheelchair until one night I got out of the car and then God used me with what seemed to be a hundred people around on the side of the street instead of street racing going on. Everyone was listening to my testimony and I sat there with all these people around me one evening um, down on South, South, Old, South Orange um, Avenue while we're supposed to be street racing. They're all gathered wondering, how is this guy in a wheelchair? What is he doing out here? And listening to a testimony of me dying in an auto accident, driving an RX-7 the night the first Fast and the Furious movie came out, June 22nd, 2001. I crashed an RX-7 that night on the way to the movies. You know, which who, who drives a car that's in the movie, crashing it the night the movie comes out? I remember previous, so you asked me about dreams. I wanted, so even like me joining the military, my dream in the military was to be better than everybody, to save a life, um, and just to do a great job. Well, I was the youngest person in basic training, being 17 years old, but yet they voted for me to be their platoon guide after Hell Week. I saved a life the week before the accident happened. When I was away in training, I saved private, a private, um, Prime, P-R-I-M-E was his name, Prime, like Optimus, but Private Prime, the Lord used me to save his life, um, which was my job, but I accomplished everything I wanted in eight months while I was in. I was an E4, Specialist 4. It takes two years to become a Specialist 4. So God, God helped me to accomplish a lot of things quickly. Um, <laughs> the night a movie come out, I'm driving one of the star cars in the movie, and I'm still, I'm a car guy, I've, I've, I've got to continue to do that role and God's brought some pretty interesting and amazing people into my life and they've used me in a certain way. Um, a desire within me was to bring forth the Lord, the word of the Lord. I never knew that I'd be sitting in an auditorium in UCF and I'm supposed to be giving, bringing forth my project but instead for the next hour I'm testifying and we're not supposed to do that in, in the class but yet the, at the end of the class no one wanted to leave the pro, the, the um, professor was okay with what was going down and here I am sitting in front of the class telling them about what God has done in my life which and I remember as I was that that, that was going on I was, I was thinking you know this is this shouldn't be in school but yes here I am doing it so I'm, I'm grateful I'm, I'm truly grateful because I know that I in myself I I don't see anything special or I don't believe that I have um, the different acc accolades to do some of the things that God did in my life and continue to do in my life, but yet here I am doing them. So, yeah, I've seen a lot of dreams come true. I'm not a big dreamer. Um, when the accident happened, I asked the Lord to not let me dream anymore, and I haven't dreamt since um, June 22nd, 2001. The last time I had a dream was before the accident. I haven't dreamt in the last 20 years. Do you view people differently because of the accident? Um... So, I can't speak of how I viewed people before the accident. I can speak of how I viewed people on a day-to-day -day basis. I can say that I view people differently because of my faith. I can say that um, over the years, um, and every day I develop and grow, um, but because of who I am and where I am in life and because of my situation, which is, uh, a man that, you know, is a disabled man that is in America. Um, I think I view people differently. Um, let's say if someone wasn't in the situation, maybe. Because I get to see very regularly um, the love or care in someone's art or the lack thereof. Um, a lot of time I find myself in situations where um, you know, I'm falling or, or, or something might happen. Um, and I'll see how people would treat me differently, how they treat someone else. Um, I think everyone probably experienced that. But I believe that because of the chair, it makes it so pronounced in my life compared, compared to most. So, and, you know, um, and especially like 
when I was younger compared to now, how people interact with me. So definitely because of the wheelchair, I get to see a, a slight different perspective than those who are not in the situations, especially when it comes to relationships. I get quickly to see how people treat, treat one um, or people taken advantage of or, or, or not. Um, and so I think because of my situation, I get a particular perspective on life and on people. But I, I've learned that though, through my belief that um, the word says we rest not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers about wickedness in strong places. So I, I've learned to try to not personalize my experiences um, and to try, treat people as people, as you know, a different time someone might be going through something and they'll re respond differently compared to a different part time in their life. So I've tried not to personalize what I'm experiencing um, because if I were to do so, I'd probably be a lot very judgmental. Have you ever been in love? Yes. Tell me about it. Okay, so I um I think I've been in love a few times. I my the first in love was with a young lady um, that I knew from a childhood in New York City, and I moved to Florida and had not spoken to her. And I remember when I started praying that God would bring some into my life, someone into my life that would love me and that we would have a good relationship. And um, after not speaking to her for three years, I called New York and my cousin said, hey, have you spoken to, to her? And I said, no, I haven't in three years. Then I, he said, hey, you probably should talk to her. And I got, called her sister and her sister told me that when she was 14, when I was living in New York, she told her mom that she wanted me to go away, experience life, and realize that she's the one from, um, she's the one that's for me, and come back to her. And so I called her and we started talking. And the night the accident happened, she warned me about it. God actually sent her a dream and sent her mother and her father a dream about me being in an accident. She went to church in um, Brooklyn to a big auditorium big big conference and out of thousands of people um sister brenda ministries um sister brenda which is from houston texas that was visiting new york she called out this young lady out of a group of thousands and told her that someone that she loved was going to have an accident the night that i was driving out she told me you know to stay home don't go anywhere and so for the next few years um, for the next 13 years, this person was instrumental to my life. The Lord used her to bring the word by helping me read the word and help, just help to develop me as a person. And we had a wonderful relationship until it was time to end. Now, more recently, recently, now I've met a young lady named Cynthia. And I, I've, I've met someone else. And um, quickly, we have kindred uh, uh, emotion that I haven't experienced in many, many years. And so I'm, I'm akinning it to falling in love, yet it's different now at the age of 39. So, um, so yes. I've, I've you consider been, yourself lucky? I consider myself blessed, yeah. I, I, I consider myself a very, very, very blessed young man in every way, shape, and form. And, I, and another thing, so I didn't know the how to express myself and how to bring forth what God done, has done in my life and what avenue I'm going, is going to be used to bring forth what God has done in my life. And I can truly say that um, I'm blessed because God is good to me and, and beyond me going, being good to myself. Um, so yes, very lucky. What is the most important thing you've learned? About life, yeah. to be grateful, to be grateful, to continually to be grateful and to continually to be open to things and to life outside of oneself. So the, great, the, the biggest thing I've learned in life is gratefulness. Even in adversary, even when there's adversary, to be grateful for the adversary because guess what? I'm alive to experience that adversary and what will it teach me? Because I can look back in life and say, hey, I've been through this. All these issues have come, but yet here I am, still, 
I've wanted to kill myself and do all these things through different um, nuances of life that came and I thought, oh, I couldn't get through this. But yet, I got through it and still I'm here today. Um, and so to be grateful and to recognize when the differences come, when quote-unquote chaos come, to know that it's not here to destroy me, know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to their purpose, which is to always be present and to do the best you can with what is given to you, or given to me, I should say. So gratefulness is the biggest thing I've learned in life, just being grateful. So what advice would you give to someone who's going through a traumatic uh, situation right now? So let me. So traumatic situations come every day um, in different ways. You know, I, 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 I can speak of myself of not knowing if I'm going to be alive in a month from now or a week from now and, and just different situations over the years. And I can say that my greatest advice is to pray and to have faith um, about everything that's going to end to uh, overthinking and believing that I have the answer, I can provide the answer, never helped, never worked with me. The only thing that's worked is to rest. To rest. Um, if I didn't get into the Bible for myself and to read it, I wouldn't have anything to sit on. I wouldn't have any foundation or ground to sit on. If I didn't pray through everything I've been through, I wouldn't be, I don't believe at all, I'd be able to come through the issues of life. And if I... If I were to be anxious of nothing, meaning that to allow the situations to sit on my mind and to continue to think through them, think through them, I don't think that would have been the answer. I think I would have stressed myself out. And so my advice is to be patient and to be grateful and to be happy. Whatever comes that way, be happy about it, no matter how difficult it might seem. So in closing... How would you like people to view you? So in closing, I don't necessarily care how people view me because everyone's going to view life in the way that they view life. What I would like to say is if you could view the fact that God has done a work within me and continue to work within me because every flesh, every human is corruptible. The word says that there's no righteous, no, not one. So me knowing that I'm unrighteous, me knowing that um, I'm flesh and capable and sin every single day, I don't necessarily care what people view me to be. But um, if one could recognize that God is working on me and God is working on them as well, um, and glory be to God, to give God the glory of the things in this earth, um, that's the only thing that's important.